Good day everyone, and welcome to our presentation of candidates for the upcoming 2020 PPHA National Election on June 29 and 30, 2020. We hope that you are all doing well despite the pandemic that we are experiencing right now. Thank you so much for spending some time with us to know more about your candidates. I am your host for today's event, Leland Anthony De Luna, a member of the PPHA Elecom team. Before we begin, let us hear a few words from our incumbent president of the Philippine Pharmacy Association, Dr. Yolanda Robles. Isang magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating mga Pilipino pharmacist mula sa akin at sa Philippine Pharmacist Association. Isang malaking kagalakan ang magbigay pugay sa inyo sa, ngayong, um, sa ngayon dahil tayo ay nasa panahon ng pagpipili ng mga tao na mamumuno sa atin sa susunod na dalawang taon. Alalahanin natin na ang Philippine Pharmacists Association ngayon ay isa ng accredited integrated professional organization na siyang kumakatawan sa lahat ng mga Pilipino pharmacists sa buong bansa. Tayo po ay magiging isang malaking organisasyon, malakas na organisasyon dahil mandatory na po ang membership sa ating organisasyon ayon sa ating RA 10918. Dahil tayo ay maghahalal ng mga bagong pinuno, isipin po natin kung ano yung makakabuti sa ating mga miyembro at sa ating status bilang mga health professionals. Bagamat hindi po ako personal na nangangampanya uh, sa kanino man, ay mataimtim naman po ang aking panalangin na sana ay tulungan tayo ng Panginoon na yung kanyang kaluuban po ang mahalal sa mga pwesto. Dapat ay ang mga taong ito ay makajos, hindi makasarili, at talagang mayroong bukal na at tunay na pagmamahal sa ating propisyon. Kukunin din po, ko din po ang oportunidad na ito upang magpasalamat sa inyong lahat dahil sa inyong uh, matibay na suporta, kooperasyon at pagtulong nung ako po ay uh, ang inyong uh, presidente uh, sa loob ng apat na taon, 2016 to 2020. Pagpalain nawa kayo ng Diyos at sana ay matupad yung ating mga pangarap para sa ating propisyon sa bansang ito. At sana rin ay yung ating mga adhikain ay matupad uh, sa kabila ng pandemya at mga di an, hindi pangkaraniwang nangyayari sa atin. Uh, akin pong dalangin na sana ay tayo ay tumibay, maging maayos ang ating uh, paggawa at makatulong tayo ng lubos sa ating mga kababayan. Sa ngayon po ay ibibigay ko na ang ating panahon sa pinuno or sa chair ng ating election committee, ang masipag at walang kupas na si pharmacist Trey Marcuelo. Muli, magandang umaga at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you so much, Dr. Robles, for those kind words and reminder. We do hope that every pharmacist will choose their leaders wisely and remember to put God in our hearts before we vote. Next, let us listen to our chair of the 2020 PPHA Elecom, Ma'am Ray Marquello, as she gives her welcoming remarks and report. Thank you, Dr. Robles, President of the Philippine Pharmacist Association, for honoring this occasion with your cordial presence. Happy Centennial Founding Anniversary to all my esteemed Filipino pharmacists, wherever you are. Welcome to PPHA's eVote system, a special contribution that may be written as we draw close to the last pages of PPHA's centennial celebration this coming August 29, 2020. eVote is an electronic, state-of-the-art voting system. The presence in the convention site is no longer a requirement for one to be able to cast a vote. E-vote, therefore, may be considered a vehicle for unity and inclusion. Every PPHA member may vote at any time from anywhere in the country or outside the Philippines. In a few days, 
we shall have a brand new experience of voting online starting Monday, June 29 at 7 a.m. up to Tuesday, June 30, 8 p.m. Philippine time. We are going to elect 15 board of trustees, nine seats to be filled for the general board membership and one seat each for a vice president in Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. And also one seat each for sectoral representatives of science, practice and education. For the past months, the election committee has been working tirelessly with our software engineer to put the e-vote system in place and in good order. I am presenting to you the statistics covering this first e-vote event. From March to June, the total of verified and qualified voters is 3,480. Let me show you the EVO charts. First, the approved voters by region. For Luzon, we have 1,693. For Mindanao, 708. For Visayas, 1,079 giving us a total of 3,480. Next charts are the approved voters by section representation. Reflected in its regional chart is a group of voters wherein the sectoral section was not set in the pre-registration templates. These voters will fill up their sector as they vote and will be captured automatically by the e-vote system. On the screen is, is statistics for Luzon, not set from the pre-registration list are 415 voters. For pharmaceutical sciences, we have 95. For pharmacy education, we have 197. For pharmacy practice, 1,056 a total of 1,693. Next chart is statistics for Visayas. Not set from the pre-registration list are 341 voters, pharmaceutical sciences 12, pharmacy education 141, pharmacy practice 583, giving us a total of 1,000 79 voters. Next chart is statistics for Mindanao. Not set from pre-registration -re list are 49 voters. Pharmaceutical Sciences 1, Pharmacy Education 44, Pharmacy Practice 614, a total of 708 voters. We will now proceed to the presentation of candidates. We had planned to share the load between the chair and the vice chair. However, for ease and convenience to prepare this video presentation during this pandemic season, we opted for the vice chair to do the whole presentation. And I thank Dr. Lidan for his kindness and understanding. Allow me to give special thanks and appreciation to all who responded to the Elecom's call for video and audio recordings to make the voter and the candidate know each other better. I truly appreciate your time, your time and your extra, extra kindness for this. Remember the date, go e-vote June 29 to 30, round the clock. I now present to you our very able Dr. Lilan De La Luna, the Vice Chair of the Election Committee. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Dr. Lilan De La Luna. Thank you very much, Mamre, for the kind words. 
And now, without further ado, allow me to present our candidates for this year's national election. Allow me to introduce to you our candidates for the 2020 PPHA national election. Presenting our candidates for Vice President for Luzon, we have Marita Siskar. She is currently the Regulatory Affairs Head of Novartis Healthcare Philippines. She has been the past president of the Philippine Association of Pharmacists in the pharmaceutical industry for eight years and has been awarded the PPHA Unilab Most Outstanding Pharmacist in the Industry in 2006. Let us listen to a few words from Marita Siskar. Hi, I'm Marita Siskar. My friends and colleagues call me Ayi. First of all, I hope everyone is doing well and I also hope that all your loved ones are safe. I have worked with the pharmaceutical industry for 34 years. I have been an active member of the Philippine Association of Pharmacists in the pharmaceutical industry, where I have been elected to different positions, which includes being its president for eight years. Actually, I'm not really new to the PPHA. I have been part of its board uh, for four years in the past. I am running as your Vice President for Luzon this coming election. I have five main goals as your VP for Luzon. And I believe that these goals are essential to serve our members and make our association stronger and more impactful. First, continuing education and professional development activities for members. CPD has always been a part of the PPHA objectives. But this time, I would like to help to enhance the way we will handle it, spe especially during this new normal period. Second, active leadership through online presence and related platforms. Third, responsive action and support measures for members in need. Fourth, enhance communication and collaboration among members. And last, service and charity projects for the community. So thank you so much for your time and consideration. Please take this opportunity to vote for future officers who have your best interest in mind. Take care and stay healthy. Our next candidate is the program head of the pharmacy department of Centro Escolar University, Makati. She is the immediate past Vice President for Luzon and has been awarded the CEU School of Pharmacy Outstanding Alumnae in the Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Donna Veldea. Let us now move on to our candidates for Vice President for Visayas. We have Henoveva Declarado. She is the owner of Ava Chris Trade Lines and Pharmacy in Iloilo City. She is the immediate past Vice President for Visayas and has been a consistent outstanding distributors awardee given by national and multinational companies. Let us listen to a few words from Henoveva Declarado. My esteemed colleagues in the pharmacy profession, I am Hinoveva M. Declarador, the incumbent PPHA Vice President for Visayas, and I am running for re-election for the same position because I feel I have more to do for all of you. I am a genuine Ilocano but solidly living two-thirds of my life in Iloilo makes me an authentic Visayan. I practiced my pharmacy profession in the hospital, in the academe, and currently in the community. We were all disrupted by this pandemic, causing great changes in our lives. Financial struggles to others and deep grief to some. I am thankful to all frontliners who selflessly performed their essential roles to support each one of us. 
I also thank people who stay at home to protect themselves and other people. Someday, we will be able to take delight in how we responded. Taking this challenge to prayers, dances and songs, bartering, and heartwarming stories of donating PPEs, face shields, masks, food parcels, medicines, and many others. This challenge is much too different to what we had before. Today, we are globally united with a common interest to instinctively fight one enemy. Despite these challenging times, we have to brace ourselves for the future of PPHA. I then encourage you to vote on June 29 at 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. of June 30. I am sending my warmest good wishes to you, my fellow pharmacists. Next is Alexis Yu. He is the owner of Alexis Yu Best Care Pharmacy and Alexis Yu Medical Clinic and Diagnostic Laboratory. He is currently the president of Region 8 Pharmacy Association and is a board of director of Basse First District Multipurpose Cooperative. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexis Yu. Finally, for our candidate for Vice President for Mindanao, we have Maria Leilani Betonio. She is currently the Dean of the Pharmacy Department of Tagum Doctors College and is also a Board of Director for the Philippine Pharmacy Association, Davao Chapter. She is also an Associate Member of the American College of Clinical Pharmacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Leilani Betonio. Maayong adlaw mga pharmacist, I am Maria Leilani Betonio running for the position of Vice President for Mindanao. As an academician pharmacist, my 30 years in educational institutions have allowed me to experience several achievements and challenges in the pharmacy profession. I am currently the Dean of the Pharmacy Department of Tagum Doctors College in Tagum City, Davao del Norte. Before I transferred to Tagum Doctors College, I was the former Dean of the Pharmacy Department of San Pedro College, Davao City for six years. I am the Board of Director of the PPHA Davao City Chapter and the Board of Director of the Mindanao Alliance of Pharmacy Schools. I served as President of the Council of Deans program heads and coordinators for health-related courses in Davao City, then as vice president and now as auditor of the same organization. I am a member of the PPHA Bureau of Speakers for three years. My vision for PPHA is to be able to deliver the three E's, engage, the pharmacist in practice development, establish strong and dynamic chapters and affiliate establishments, and equip pharmacists to be prepared for evolving roles in the healthcare system. Thank you very much. And don't forget to vote on June 29 to 30. Moving on, let me now introduce to you our candidates for the Board of Trustees. Starting with Aleth Therese Dakanai. She is a board member of the PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. She is currently the Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy of the University of Santo Tomas and is also the President of the Philippine Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Aleth Therese Dakanai. Brian Posadas. 
He is also a board member of PPHA from 2018 to 2020. He is the president of the BYP Trading and Consultancy Services and is a member of the PPHA Bureau of Speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Posadas. Our next candidate is Venus Roque. She is the chief pharmacist of Gig Oka Robles Siemens Hospital. She was the co-chair of the 2019 PPHA National Convention held in Davao City. She is also the current president of the Davao Pag-asa Toastmaster Club. Let us listen to a few words from Venus Roque. Good day, fellow pharmacists. This is Venus Roque, Chief Pharmacist of Gig Oka Robles Siemens Hospital and the immediate past president of PPHA Davao City Chapter and the incoming president of Pagasa Toastmasters Club. I am running for PPHA Board of Trustees. I never thought that I will be running for a national position, but destiny has its way around us. My vision for PPHA can be encapsulated in one word epic. PPHA should provide experiential learning activities for pharmacists in order to encourage participation and involvement. Only then can we ensure continuity of progress we have achieved. I hope that you will vote this coming June 29-30. Good day. Up next is Kenny James Merin. He is the proprietor and CEO of Merin Pharmacy. He is currently the pharmacy program chair of the Lyceum of the Philippines, Davao. He was also the first president of the Mindanao Alliance of Pharmacy Schools. Let's now listen to a few words from Kenny James Merin. Hi, I am Kenny James P. Merin from Davao City. 30 years old and a pharmacist in the community in the academe. I hold nine years of experience in the academe where currently I am the pharmacy program chair and research office coordinator of the Lyceum of the Philippines University Davao. I am the president of the Mindanao Alliance of Pharmacy Schools or commonly known as MAPS. I am also a community pharmacist as the owner of Marion Pharmacy which my wife and I started in 2017. I have been in service to PPHA and its members since I graduated in college way back 2010 from the University of the Immaculate Conception. I started to serve as the Public Information Officer and currently I am the Vice President of the PPHA Davao City Chapter. If you are to trust me with this position of Board of Trustees in the Philippine Pharmacists Association, I will focus on the following in the board. I'll say, let's go digital. G for good governance, D for decentralization from central office, I for inclusivity of regions in all projects and advocacies, G for growth among members through equal opportunities and benefits, I for involvement in pressing issues where pharmacy should be heard, T for transparency for all projects, A for accountability from all project managers, and L for listening to what our members really need. In my candidacy to be part of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Pharmacist Association, I offer my years of leadership experience, my love for my profession, my extensive academic experience, and my newfound love for the community pharmacy. I decided to run for this position in the interest of representing my fellow pharmacists and with high hopes to use my God-given skills to continue the good doings and inculcate ideas that will further uplift our beloved profession. Thank you very much, and I hope you vote for me. Next is Nelson Tubon. He is a professor at the Faculty of Pharmacy of the University of Santo Tomas. He is the immediate past president of the Pharmacy Preceptors Guild of the Philippines and was awarded the Most Outstanding Pharmacist in Education by PPHA in 2019. Let us listen to a few words from Nelson Tumor. 
Dr. Nelson T. Tubon is a multi-degree holder having earned a bachelor's degree in pharmacy, nursing, and secondary education major in biology. He started his professional career as a community pharmacist of Tropical Hot Drug Store and as a faculty member of CEU School of Pharmacy while pursuing his MSc in pharmacy and later his PhD in business management through a research grant from the Philippine Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. Dr. Tubon was licensed to practice in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia while employed at the Medicine and Medical Services Corporation where he held the position of manager and pharmacist of one of the largest drugstore chains in KSA for four years. In spite of his success in a foreign country, Dr. Tubon could not resist the lure of sharing his experience and helping the education of Filipino pharmacists in deciding to come home and reactivate his teaching stint at CEU and as consultant to ICAN or International Children's Network Foundation and Life and Health Source Pharmaceutical Distribution Company. Dr. Tubon served as lecturer, resource speaker of numerous seminars and conferences, author of books, reference materials, modules, and laboratory manuals on pharmaceutical jurisprudence and ethics, pharmaceutical management, and administration. He became a recipient of Most Outstanding Pharmacist in Education, PPHA Award. He was honored by CEU as Outstanding Pharmacy Alumni and Scholar Jubilarian. Dr. Tubon is currently a full-time faculty member of the UST Faculty of Pharmacy and the Graduate School, Coordinator of Pharmacy Experiential Education Program, and member of PPHA Speakers Bureau. Our next candidate is Marian Andaluz. She was a former chair and member of the Board of Pharmacy in 2005. She was also a former executive vice president and PRO of the PPHA and is currently the official delegate for the ASEAN Consultative Committee on Standards and Quality Harmonization on Registration of Pharmaceuticals. Let us listen to a few words from Marian Andaluz. Century of professionalism dedication, and strong commitment to healthcare. We have so much to be thankful for from the men and women who have led and managed our beloved Philippine Pharmacist Association through the years. Thank you to all our leaders and committed members around the country. And may I also greet everyone a happy centennial anniversary. Moving forward, each of us faces a great challenge amidst the uncertainties from this unprecedented health crisis. We need to adapt to changes in the way we work, communicate, and execute our healthcare tasks. As an association, PPHA needs to find ways to help empower its members to respond to the new environment. The challenge at hand is to elect the right leaders who will work as one to take care of its members. We need leaders who will communicate and listen to all its members. In the same way, members should continue to communicate and collaborate because as they say, we are all in this together. With PPHA, let's make our countrymen get the right healthcare service they deserve from Filipino pharmacists. Let's all be proud of our role as vital partners in healthcare. I'm Marian Milan Andaluz, a proud member of the Philippine Pharmacist Association. Next is Oscar Ocampo Jr. He is a board member of the PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. He was the president of PPHA Quezon City East Metro Chapter from 2014 up to 2019. And now, 
the president of the CEU Pharmacy Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar Ocampo Jr. Next is Hazel Fado Kuyana. She is a board member of the PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. She is also the Assistant Vice President and the Chief Pharmacist Officer of Makati Medical Center and was the President of the Philippine Society of Hospital Pharmacists from 2014 up to 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, Hazel Faye Tokuyana. candidate is the Chief Pharmacist Liaison Officer to FDA of Rodamel Drugstore. She was the past president of PPHA Cagayan North Chapter and is a trainer and assessor for Pharmacy Services NC3. Ladies and gentlemen, Baby Charlotte Marcian. Magandang araw sa lahat ng Filipino pharmacists sa buong mundo. Ako po si Baby Charlotte Marciano, Kandidato bilang Board of Director sa National Election ng Philippine Pharmacist Association. I am a community pharmacist in Cagayan and I am serving the Cagayan North Chapter as their Chairman of the Board for this term. I have been into various elect positions of the chapter and was able to serve not only our fellow pharmacists but also help make an impact in the community through the activities of our association. Being a community pharmacist, it is by this step that I am able to encourage our interns to practice well and know the profession better. Also, to mentor new pharmacists to be health initiators for public awareness and the prevention of diseases. As we are serving our community this way, we know we have made an impact that we are the pharmacist. Meron po kayong nine na pipiliin bilang board of director ngayong June 29 at 30. Sana po isama niyo ako sa isa na yun. I am counting on your vote. Muli, ako po si Baby Charlotte Marciano, kandidato bilang board of director ngayong national election. Salamat muli sa inyong mga boto. Next is Robinson Uy. He is the owner of La Nueva Pharmacy in Cebu. He is currently the president of PPHA Cebu Chapter and has organized CPD programs and other social services of the association. Ladies and gentlemen, Robinson Uy. Mark Ryan Langit. He is a faculty and former department head of St. Louis University School of Natural Sciences. He was also the vice president for Luzon of the Young Pharmacist Group from 2016 up to 2018. And he is currently a member of the PPHA Bureau of Speakers. Let us listen to a few words from Mark Ryan Langit. Kamusta po kayo? Mark Ryan Langit, ang from my hometown, San Jacinto, Pakistan, I went up the mountains of Baguio City, initially to pursue my education and eventually my career as a pharmacist and academician in St. Louis University. Two decades of being a pharmacist, I have learned a lot from professionalism to collaboration, dedication, and compassion. My humble start as a community pharmacist has given me the foundations of being a goal-driven pharmacist. Managing and survival of the pharmacy business is another. Hence, as we face the new normal, we would like to reach out to our dear colleagues, 
as we all recover with the operations affected by the crisis. Mga kasamahan, we are here to support and assist you. Bilang isang academician in the university for 17 years, and also as a speaker and module developer in different institutions, I strongly believe that now is the time for us to stay learning and be with a clear vision towards career progression and forward to strengthening our competencies like those on emergency preparedness and other specializations that will make us truly responsive in health crises. Having served the posts of Vice President for Luzon at YPG Philippines and as a Chapter Secretary of PTHD Baguio Philippines, our mission remains. We are one in PTHD as we all move forward and upward together so that we can show to our clients that we are pharmacists, partners in healthcare. And remember, in times like this, no pharmacists should be left behind. Muli po, Mark Ryan lang ang inyong kasamahang nagpamalasa. Our next candidate was a former member and chair of the Board of Pharmacy from 2003 up to 2011. He is also a regulatory consultant of Taisho Pharmaceuticals and is currently the General Secretary of the Western Pacific Pharmaceuticals Forum, FIP. Ladies and gentlemen, Reynaldo Maxlito Umari. is Mercelinda Gutierrez. She is a pharmacist at the Supreme Court of the Philippines. She was a board of director of PPHA from 2014 up to 2018. She is currently the chairperson for the Disaster Management Advocacy Group of the PPHA. Let us listen to a few words from Mercelinda Gutierrez. Hello, pharmacists. Good afternoon. Great to see all of you here in virtual video. Thanks to Ma'am Ray Marquello and the rest of the Elecom crew for the job well done. I am Marcelinda Rema Gutierrez from the Institutional Group of Pharmacies <clears throat> and connected to the Supreme Court of the Philippines. I am running as one of the Board of Trustees of PPHA on this coming election on June 29 to 30. To my family, friends, and colleagues, thank you for this amazing ride and I certainly look forward to this next chapter together. If given the opportunity and chance to serve again my fellow pharmacists as well as in the community. Colleagues, let us not build walls and barriers within our profession. Let us join our hands and celebrate our success instead of competing each other with each other. Pharmacists, be proud and stand tall. Rise and be heard. Shine. Mahalaga po ang inyong boto. Mercy Gutierrez po, maling maglilingkod sa inyo. Up next is Froyland Bagabaldo. He is a senior partner at the Laguesma Magsalin Consulta and Gastardo Law Offices. He is currently a professorial lecturer for at the UP College of Pharmacy and the Executive Vice President of PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, Froilan Bagaban. candidate is the Assistant Vice President for the Office of Regulatory Affairs of United Laboratories. She was the Treasurer of PPHA from 2014 up to 2018 and was awarded the Outstanding Pharmacist Award by PPHA in 2018. Let us listen to a few words from Maria Lourdes Garganera. I am grateful 
grateful to Providence for having inspired me to choose pharmacy as a profession. Ever since college graduation, I have increasingly developed an affinity and love for the profession. Years of service as an executive in different pharmaceutical enterprises have gradually opened my eyes to the reality of how much pharmacy means to God's creatures, particularly mankind. This love for the profession has driven me to serve and develop a personal kinship and mutually with fellow pharmacists as I chose membership in different pharmaceutical organizations as the vehicle by which I could best serve their mutual interests. By the help of God, I realized that dream beyond my expectations. In recognition of my services and infectious enthusiasm to serve, these organizations eventually saw it fit to elect me to responsible positions and for extraordinary services rendered, I was awarded various citations and awards, the Tomasian Outstanding Alumni Award and the Philippine Pharmacists Association Bowl of Igea, to name a few. Then devotedly rendered service becomes an obsession. Perhaps it is on account of this obsession that I am prevailed to seeking an opportunity to serve the PPHA. COVID-19 and the uncertainties of the future make it impractical to present platforms with definite programs for the association at the moment. By this presence, however, please let me assure you all that no matter how difficult the task to be rendered, no matter how strong the challenges, but by the help of God, I am always ready to serve you, my fellow pharmacists, and the PPHA in the best manner I know how. Thank you for your friendship, and may the good Lord bless you and yours, always. I am Alu Sindico Garganera, serving you with passion and commitment. Next is Maria Hilda Salhai. She is a board member of PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. She was the overall chairperson of the 2019 PPHA National Convention held in Davao City. She was the president of PPH Davao from 2012 up to 2017. Let us listen to a few words from Maria Hilda Salhai. Hi to all Filipino pharmacists out there. This is Gigi Salhai of Davao City. I am one of the members of PPHA Board of Trustees. With that, I would like to thank you for giving me the chance to serve you and the association for the past two years. Our next PPHA national elections will be on June 29 and 30. I am inviting all qualified and verified voters to please participate in our very first online elections. During these trying times, health is our main concern. Being part of the healthcare sector, we need to put together our knowledge, skills, and experiences anchored with the values necessary to face this new normal. We have lots of stories to tell about how pharmacists have stepped up, especially during this pandemic. Stories of heroic service will be told forever, but we need a strong group of leaders to sustain and get this through. Leaders that would embrace, innovate, and advocate changes to the country's healthcare system. Leaders that would help rise the profession beyond the challenges of the practices. Leaders that could empower the local chapters and strengthen the PPHA membership. Fellow pharmacists, I hope you can find time to know more about the candidates and to learn about the PPHA e-vote system. Please visit this link. 
choose and vote wisely because your single vote will truly make a difference. Kaya po natin ito kapag tulong-tulong tayo sa pagdating ng bagong sintenaryo. May God bless us all! Next is Marilyn Tew. She was a member of the Board of Pharmacy from 2009 up to 2013. She was also the program head of the PPHA Pharmacy Dots Initiative and is currently a member of the PPHA Speakers Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, Marilyn Q. Hello friends! The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted us in so many ways. There are a lot of things that we need to do. But then again, the Philippine Pharmacist Association has decided to push through with the national election because that is what is being mandated in our constitution and bylaws. I urge you then to take a little of your time on June 29 or 30 to choose the next batch of Board of Trustees. We will all be experiencing the first time ever e-voting for the Philippine Pharmacists Association. Let us not lose this chance. Thank you. Last, but definitely not the least, we have Helen Maita Reyes. She served as the director of the Compliance Service under the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency from 2010 up to 2018. She is also a board member of PPHA from 2018 up to 2020. She was also given the Bolo Vigia Award by PPHA in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, Helen Maita Reyes. Let's now move on to our candidates for the pharmacy section representatives. Let us start with our candidate for the pharmacy practice area. We have Rosaline Pangan. She is the supply chain planning manager of St. Luke's Medical Center. She is also the point person of PSHP for the Antimicrobial Stewardship Program and is also the executive vice president of the Philippine Society of Hospital Pharmacists. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosaline Panga. Next, let me introduce our candidate for the pharmaceutical sciences. We have Rossi Barangan. She is the vice president for manufacturing of EL Laboratories. She is the founding board of the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineers and is also the founding president of the UP College of Pharmacy Alumni Association. Let us listen to a few words from Rossi Barak. Hello. I pray that you are safe and keeping safe by wearing masks, physical distancing, and washing hands. I imagine that mask and hand washing are not difficult for us pharmacists as we are used to this. Maybe for us it is the physical distancing that's really driving us crazy. Not being able to hug, beso beso, and hang out with friends. But as we know, it is during these trying times that we can only choose how to act either positively or negatively. It is in the most difficult times of one's life that we realize our strengths and weaknesses. As we struggle to adapt to the now new normal and mourn the loss of some of our family friends, family members, and colleagues who may have succumbed to the virus, as I have lost a nephew 
and a very close colleague and friend. In spite of this, we have to continue to do our jobs as pharmacists. People normally associate pharmacists as those dispensing in the community or hospital pharmacies or clinical pharmacists in the hospitals. Rarely do they know that we are so much more, like actually discover and make the medicines, make sure they are safe and effective, and that they are available in the drugstores and hospitals. To me, this, is, this became more evident during this current pandemic. When the quarantine was imposed three months ago, we in the pharmaceutical industry were considered by government as essential workers similar to the other pharmacists in the community and hospital. But at the same time, we were not considered frontliners. So we remain operational. However, people do not understand that our work is essential in ensuring that there are medicines and medical supplies in the hospitals and drug stores. During the first several weeks of the quarantine, our people were not allowed to pass through the checkpoints nor even go out of their villages. We cannot avail of the fast lane reserved for from, for the frontliners. People perceive our jobs as not necessary in fighting COVID nor essential in their survival. Still, we continue to defy the checkpoints and the curfews, continue to operate, and continue to make and deliver the essential medicines and medical supplies. We continue to deal with government agencies to, re to release our precious products. This struck me as, a, as there's much work still needed to make more people truly understand what pharmacists really do and the importance of our work. Therefore, I ask you to vote on June 29 to 30 on our first electronic national elections so that through the PPHA, we may continue the hard work of not just serving our patients, but also educating and informing the general public as a whole. Remember, it is not the leaders who make a difference, but it is all of us as an organization, as PPHA, as pharmacists who go to the front lines, go to the factories, to the laboratories, warehouses, and government regulatory agencies against the odds that would define who we really are. We are pharmacists. This is Rossi Barangan. I am a pharmacist. And lastly, we have our candidates for the pharmaceutical education. First, we have Harvey Adamson. He is the Dean of the Philippine Women's University School of Pharmacy. He was the former Secretary of PACO and the Chairperson for the Academic Committee of the YPG. Let's listen to a few words from Harvey Adamson. Good day. I'm Mark Harvey Adamson, 27 years old. I'm a candidate for Section Representative Pharmaceutical Education. I have seven years of experience as a registered pharmacist five years as an academician in the pharmacy profession. I'm currently the program chair of the Philippine Women's University School of Pharmacy and a former secretary of PACO and a member of Regional Quality Assessment Team of CHED and CR. I've been teaching to inspire and to make a difference in our pharmacy students' lives. And I'm running because I believe as a young professional and a young academician, I can go above and beyond the call of duty to contribute and to transform the pharmacy education and practice, especially in relation to the new normal in the Philippines. We all face new challenges in terms of keeping up momentum and motivation in a digital and virtual world of the new normal. I hear from the vast majority of individuals I have spoken to that it is indeed time for a change to adapt to this new normal. As I am quick to point out, I believe that adapting and adjusting to a new normal needs to be positive and feasible for it to be worthwhile. 
If I win this election, I will support and lead more collaboration with academic institutions, especially in the provinces. I will promote research and development in different areas of pharmaceutical education and practice to determine the gaps and to align the needs of pharmaceutical industry and the competencies of our future pharmacists. In order for me to help and improve our practice in pharmaceutical education, I humbly ask for your vote and support this coming June 29 and 30, 2020, the PPHA national election as your section representative. Again, I'm Mark Harvey Adamson and together we will develop exceptional pharmacies of the future. Thank you. We have Virgilio Tan II. He is the Dean of Riverside College, College of Pharmacy. He is also the Academic Manager for Arts and Allied Sciences Cluster at Riverside College. He is currently the Vice President of Negros Occidental Pharmacists Association. Let us listen to a few words from Virgilio Tan II. Today, fellow pharmacists and those in the pharmacy education sector, I am Virgilio Waitan II from Bacolod City, Negros Occidental. Currently, I am the Dean of the College of Pharmacy in Riverside College, Incorporated. Aside from managing the pharmacy program, I also manage the Arts and Sciences Cluster as the Academic Manager. Likewise, I am currently a member of the Regional Quality Assurance Team of CHED Region 6 and also as an accreditor of the Philippine Accrediting Association of Schools, Colleges, and Universities for Pharmacy Education. The plight of pharmacy education in light of a new normal is on how we can innovate and adapt to this pandemic crisis. My electoral platform is to develop a curriculum that will address the needs of the learners and the teachers on this new normal. In order that we can develop a good curriculum for pharmacy, academic institutions should focus on measuring the capabilities of their students that students can graduate on time and pursue academic careers. Online classroom courses have changed the face of education, but learning theories that inform traditional educational methods still stands when taking a course in college. Together with the faculty and administrators of the different schools of pharmacy in the Philippines, as an aspirant for the position as the pharmaceutical education representative of the Philippine Pharmacies Association Incorporated, I believe that we can innovate, adapt, and be at par with the curriculum of our neighboring ASEAN countries in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. We do hope that this was a good opportunity for you to get to know your candidates more and decide on who to vote on June 29 and 30. I have been your host, Ilan Anthony De La Luna, now signing off.